Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode. We will be talking about the Freebird 60. This is one of my favorite keyboards to date and probably ever since I started the hobby. This is by Keeps for All. It's a tray mounted keyboard, but I did something special with the gasket mounting system to give it more flex and to improve the overall acoustics of this keyboard. Um, in its stock form, it's actually already good, uh, typical of a tray mounted keyboard. But what keeps for all is um, marketing with this keyboard is that almost everything that you need to modify this keyboard is already provided in the kit. There's a silicone pad. It's a keyboard that comes in with a Duroc V2 screw in stabilizers. That's crazy, crazy value for the price that you're getting it. And it also comes in with the O-rings that you will be needing if you want to use the O-ring mounting style with the screw. Um, however, I did not use that. I did my own mounting style for this keyboard, which worked pretty well. Suffice it to say, this keyboard has been part of my daily rotation. I've been using it more than my other keyboards for the past month that I have it. It is that good. So in this video, I will show you how I modded the Freebird 60 and hopefully you would be encouraged to get the remaining few stocks of this keyboard available in your area. Because I believe this is a very good value keyboard. It's really that good. So let's dive into it. For this video, I won't go into too much detail on what the board is because a lot of reviews already covered that. What I'm going to teach you is how I made and modified this keyboard to make it sound better, poppier, creamier, and improve the bounce and flex of the Freebird 60. So um, that is what I'm going to share to you today. This is already my Freebird 60. Uh, modded version. I already modded the stabilizers with the Holy Mod uh, using Leucoplast tape, which is one of my favorite materials for Holy Modding the Duroc stabilizer. Just quick note, when you do the Holy Mod for the Duroc V2 stabs, uh, these already have very tight tolerances. So you have to really use a thin cut out piece of that Holy Mod. Otherwise, it might result into unwanted mushiness or even ticking in some instances. So those strips that you're going to use for the holy mod should be really really thin just enough just enough to fill the width of that um, stabilizer stem that you're going to put it into okay um okay so let's open up this keyboard and see what i did it has four screw points but but i only use two um just the two bottom uh, points on each side. Um, if you want, you can actually you can actually not use the screws. However, my problem is is that the board is flipping over. It flips over when I press. See that? Yeah. When I press the top layer, that's why I had to put in the screws. Oh, so okay. So so this is kind of reverse build. <laughs> All right, so I we're starting from the final product and then I'm going to show you what I did inside it. All right, so um, I only placed one layer of Tempest tape. I wanted the natural sound of the board to still be heard and I wanted um, the boards that I have to sound differently because if you have Tempest Tape, three layers, and PE foam in all of your keyboards, then eventually it might end up sounding everything the same. So this one is the, my first time to use just one, and I found that it makes the sound poppier, um, a little bit louder, while still retaining, retaining the sound of the keyboard. In between the plate and the PCB, I got a plate foam from PMX.gg. Um, I really think this keyboard will benefit from a plate foam. That is the only thing that this keyboard needs that is not included from the kit. Okay. If they included the plate foam, then you're good to go. All right. So let's now discuss the interesting part. How did I achieve that sound and that flex? Well, basically, I modified the mounting system of this keyboard. 
the standard tray mounting style was okay. When you use the sandwich mounting O-rings that came with the kit, it did provide some sort of flex and bounce to it, but uh, for me, it was still stiff. So initially, I thought of placing um, cut strips on the standoffs um, on top of it, but I found that it was too unstable. The, the board was flipping over the PCB, and uh, it was hard to screw because the screws were not that long. But what I did like about the tray mount style of this keyboard is that um, the standoffs are very short, very short, almost at the level of the silicone dampener. So I figured, what if I try placing gasket strips around them? And that is what I did. These are D65 gasket strips I placed on the side, on the top, and on the bottom. Initially, I also placed at the middle, but it was too much. And lo and behold this configuration worked really well um it was stable the board was stable the typing feel was even it became really flexy really bouncy and it sounded really good um with a little bit of polyfill in it i love i love how it sounded um again only a single layer of um tape mod so this is my first 60% keyboard. Um, I couldn't jump into the layout because I really need my arrow keys. Luckily, the Freebird 60 offers that. When you're putting this back in, um, just screw it enough so that the PCB and plate doesn't lift out of the keyboard, but not too much so that you still have that play. Okay, so let's screw it in. Yeah, that might be enough. Just a few turns of the screw once it attaches to the lower case. Okay, that's enough. It's lifting. It shouldn't lift. Otherwise, if it lifts, uh, again, it will, it will topple over when you press that upper portion. So, um, so that's what I did to my Freebird. Um, to achieve that flex that you're seeing right now and that sound profile. Uh, it's a really good keyboard. I love how it looks. I love the thin bezels, um, the subtle Freebird logo on the side, everything about this keyboard. Uh, the sound stock is really decent. It's actually okay, but after I modded it, it's one of my favorite keyboards right now. And honestly, if you're going to ask me which keyboard I will keep, if I can only keep one right now, because of the price, because of the overall typing feel, um, this might be it. Okay. Um, but you have a Mr. Suit. Are you saying that it's better than the Mr. Suit? No, I'm not saying that. Um, the Mr. Suit is awesome, but if you factor in the price, I think I'll choose this more. That is how good this keyboard is. So I hope you find this video modding guide and review useful. Please continue to support this channel. Hit that like and subscribe guys. And I will leave you with a final sound test.